Hey everybody, I wanted to make a quick video on this Fascinations uh, IXP3. It's a internet slash Twitter um, communications device. This, this a, it shows you floating time and messages and whatnot. I bought this particular device from a thrift store and I was a little concerned because it didn't have a power supply. And unlike typical devices, it required a 12 volt AC 220 milliamp um, supply. Um, I'm used to having devices require a 12 volt DC supply, so that was the first hurdle to overcome. But once I plugged it up, um, this, the, uh, the whatever this thing is in the middle, uh, started to go too far to one end and knock and go too far to the other end and knock. And I was really concerned that there was something majorly wrong with it. But when I disassembled it, which only required pulling loose two tabs and taking loose two screws here at the bottom, two screws at the bottom. Once I did that, I saw on the back of the unit that this capacitor here, and I don't know if you can see it, this capacitor here, um, there's a capacitor missing in the unit. And if anybody knows what that capacitor's value is, I would be greatly appreciative if you tell me what that is. But that is missing, and I assume it's not crucial to the inner workings of the device. But this capacitor here, and this is only for educational purposes only. I'm not trying to show the inner workings of this so that anyone can copy it or just so that people who actually own the device can repair it themselves. Okay, so that capacitor was bulged. That's this capacitor here. Um, this capacitor is, and I don't know if you can see, it says two, 2,200 microfarads at 25 volts. And it is it has a positive and negative, and you can see the bulge on it. So... Um, I figured, what the heck, I'll go ahead and replace it. I replaced it with a, another electrolytic capacitor uh, that is 2,200 microfarads. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to see that. But at 16 volts and uh, relatively the same case size so that I could replace it in the unit. And I went ahead and did that. And the unit works beautifully now. Um, like I said, it's still missing that one capacitor there. And I don't know what that's all about. But... Um, the unit works, and the next step is I'm going to go ahead and register it on the IXP3 website so that I can go ahead and set the date and time and possibly messages that I want to be displayed on this device. It's a cool little device. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people say that they received them either broken or they broke after a while. And I can only assume that either they didn't have the proper power supply and they were overpowering the unit or that something went wrong with the unit and it was leaking too much power to the capacitor and the capacitor failed. Once the capacitor fails, you're no longer going to get a display. The, the flicker is going to go too far to either side and start to knock back and forth. And once it does that, um, because of the sensor, there's an infrared brake sensor here. Because of the infrared brake sensor, and I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark here, what I'm looking at. But there's an infrared brake sensor right there. And if the timing's not right on that infrared brake sensor, it's not going to allow it to display any anything on the LEDs at the top. So hopefully that helps someone. Um, once again, the capacitor that I replaced it with was an electrolytic capacitor, 2,200 microfarads at 16 volts. Um, I've always kind of used it as a rule of thumb to go either higher and not to go lower. But the base on the circuit is this 12 volt AC and it doesn't step up the voltage in the circuit. So I assume that the highest voltage in the circuit is going to be roughly 15 to 16 volts. So a 16 volt um, electrolytic capacitor uh, should be more than sufficient to handle the load that's in the circuit. Um, the proof is in the pudding, of course, and the unit works. I'm not going to try and plug it up because I don't know if this video is going to sync with it. So I, there's a lot of videos that showing the unit working, but basically it, it flickers back and forth here and then it displays um, images. All right. It displays words and time and whatnot. Right, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, um, I'm always open to it. I'm going to go show one more um, picture of the circuit just in case there's people out there trying to see the circuit. And that's the reason why they're here. I'm going to move up as close as I can to it. I'll show you the bottom here. Move along, move along, and move up. And from what I can see, that capacitor is C1, capacitor number one in the circuit. And I assume that's the timer for the, as part of the timing circuit, for the, um, the loop on the, um, 
the magnetics that's going to pull the, the swing arm back and forth at the proper speed. All right. Um, if you got any corrections, comments, concerns, and if you know what that capacitor is, that'd be great too. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Good luck.